the goal here is for you to learn which school is right for you. We have a lot of our students that transfer to Appalachian. The majority of our students do consider Appalachian that transfer there. And they, as well as all schools in these pandemic times, they're having giving you lots of options to visit. And so the goal here is to get on their website and look for a tab called visit. They'll usually have it pretty obvious because they want students to be looking at whether this school is right for them and um, showing you all the ways in which you can connect with their staff. And then second to that is once you maybe get an idea of the school that you want to visit, even if it's virtually, uh, then is to maybe find out whether they're doing information sessions and whether their information sessions are uh, for a department or just for the type of student you are. And since we have a lot of transfer students in comparison to freshmen right out of high school, you may be able to have an information session just for transfer. But then they also have varying types of departmental information sessions as well that may be just specific to your major. And so you can usually get a, a good bit of information up front through these information sessions. And it's just a matter of registering uh, through whatever link that they have provided to you to sign up for those. And then the third one is apply. If you're ready then to apply to that college or university and they'll usually have a published deadline for uh, their applications and this is so that gives you enough time uh, to get everything in order and uh, and um, decisions that need to be made and will go on uh, to kind of uh, go through some of those decisions that must be made before you enroll and so usually these deadlines uh, are usually before February 1st for a typical fall semester transition. And then there comes the need to order your transcripts from here, from CCC and TI to be sent to your university of choice. And it's usually recommended to send two. So one is going to have your in-progress courses if you haven't completed your degree yet or completed your 30 hours. Um, or to hold one until the grades are recorded uh, for the current semester or if you are planning on finishing your degree here until your degree is conferred. And then next, you're going to want to apply for scholarships. There are lots of scholarships that um, each university may offer particularly to transfer students and different from their freshman students. And those usually have deadlines of February 1 as well. So it might be beneficial to, again, look at those early application deadlines, not just for admissions, but also for the scholarships. And then if you have utilized financial aid in the past, you may still be able to continue using financial aid uh, at the four-year university and you will want to use um, all resources through that university's website to get their school code to apply for your next year cycle of FAFSA as well. And then after that application cycle, you will receive, it could be an acceptance letter, it could be a denial letter, or it could be a pending admit um, and they might need more information from you. So usually that timeline will be around four to six weeks after you submit your application. If it's a welcome to whatever college or university you've applied to, you usually get information in that email or packet about um, your next steps, whether it's uh, directing you to activate your email, uh, but it's usually required to even further get along in your admissions process for that university uh, to include uh, pre-orientation things. Um, also, once uh, you're admitted, they're going to be reviewing those transcripts. And it's called a degree audit. And if you'll 
it's going to look different for every student. So just review that carefully. And in some cases where you had believed that you would have courses transfer but didn't, you might need to just talk with their uh, transcript evaluators or your uh, transfer liaison for that campus to see uh, what might have happened. And if you might need a petition for credit in some cases. And usually that process is um, identified on their website or they will direct you to those sources on their website to help you understand that petition process. There is even a process for um, uh, petitioning for uh, to award gen ed credit hours if you have are or in progress of completing your degree and the university is not awarding you gen ed credit um, and understanding why they're not awarding you credit it we might need to refer to uh, the universal articulation agreements uh, for whichever degree you're transferring in whether that is a uh, uh, the AA or the AS degree, or whether it's a birth to K degree, or whether it's um, any of our other universal articulation agreements. Um, um, oh, the fine arts degrees ones are also uh, have universal agreements uh, associated with them. So it's worth taking a look at the appeal process if you're not getting awarded gen ed credit at the four year university. And then um, to continue on, um, you will probably need to attend an orientation of some sort or some sort of orient, uh, orientation event. I know for Appalachian, they have uh, a nice uh, pr admitted student webinar that they invite students to attend. So after you get your admissions acceptance letter, it's always good to kind of now then follow up with uh, attending one of these webinars and they will probably give you a lot of the same information that I'm giving you on your next steps because that's going to be important for that transition. And then some of the other uh, things to consider if you're not applying for a distance education program at a college or university, you'll need to be starting to think about um, those on-campus or off-campus housing decisions. Uh, I know transfer students are not required to live on campus and so you have that flexibility and it's good to consider um, how, how that's going to look for you, whether it's um, relocating to the area that the school is at on the main campus or if it's um, within a commutable distance and you're not going to have to consider housing at all. Um, and then for early college, applying as freshmen with advanced standing, I think it's going to depend on that particular school. So it would just uh, vary depending upon the school. So it's good to attend those orientation sessions that, uh, you're, that will be extended to you. And then if you are going to be living there, uh, I know a lot of colleges and universities have lots of places um, within and outside the campus that you can get part-time work. And that also includes work study, federal work study. So take advantage of what we posted on their website for part-time jobs. And then last but not least, make sure to reach out and take advantage of all of those campus resources that they're going to have available to you. And that may include TRIO. And um, one of our guest speakers was a transfer mentor at Appalachian. Sarah, you were one of those. And I'd love to hear your experience about that here in a little bit. And uh, But you're going to um, have access to even some Facebook groups. I know Trans, uh, Appalachian has one of those as well. I think a lot of the universities do. Uh, and um, But you'll get a lot of inside scoop just by accessing those sources of um, information. And you will get there, trust me. So I am, that concludes my
a little bit of information and now I want to get to some of our esteemed alumni that I have joining me here today and um, two of our folks that I have with me today are uh, Miranda Morris and Sarah Estes and for Miranda I just wanted to share with you a little bit that she began her CCC NTI journey here in 2009 as a freshman at the early college and while studying it's here she discovered her passion for higher education and in 2014 Miranda graduated from CCC and TI and transferred to Gardner Webb and, and she actually went to the main campus in Boiling Springs and studied English there until she graduated with her master's in 2019 and guess what we have her now as an instructor here for our English students so welcome Miranda and we also have joining us also Sarah Estes, who also graduated from us here in 2018 and transferred to Appalachian. And she majored and got her bachelor's degree in social work in December. And she is now, now continuing her, her educational journey to at, at UNC Wilmington's higher education program. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody. Okay, how can I stop sharing? <laughs> Honey, it's the little, right next to where it says share content, and that white box is the little circle with the square in it. Up at the very top. Yep. What, right here? Yep, right there. Yep. There, you go. there we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm technically challenged today. <laughs> So um, you both began your higher educational journey at CCC and TI. So um, Miranda, how did you decide what to study at CCC and TI? So I started at Caldwell as a freshman at their early college. And so until our last few years of high school, the path was pretty much determined for us. Um, but I decided to stick with the AA because I knew um, from my junior year on that I was going to major in English and I wanted to be prepared for that when I got to Gardner Webb. So that was an easy decision. And Sarah, what about you? Sure, so I actually started out at the community college to be a physical therapy assistant major and then I actually changed my mind about that and I was the student that didn't really know what she wanted to do so my advisor suggested the AA degree because it just gives you a different like course load. You get to experience all these different classes and all these different subjects. And then um, during that journey, I realized that I wanted to do higher education. So the AA degree just worked perfect for me to transfer to Appalachian for me to get my bachelor's degree. Excellent. And Miranda, what factors went into your decision to attend Gardner-Webb versus a different school? So originally, I thought I was going to follow some of my friends and go to Chapel Hill, but my parents decided to encourage me to look at Gardner-Webb and consider Gardner-Webb because it was an easy school for me to get into with my GPA. So they just wanted me to have a backup. So I went to tour the first time with them and really wasn't all that serious about it but as soon as I got there I fell in love with it and it started taking my interest more and more and I ended up touring Gardner Webb three times that year and the third time I got to actually meet with some of the professors in the English department and I really connected with them, and they reminded me a lot of the English instructors that I had had here at Caldwell. And so I just really felt like that was where I needed to be. Um, so at that point, I put down my deposit, and it was set for me. <laughs> I 
I was just going to say that exemplifies that example of how much a difference it makes to really visit the, the college and university that you're thinking of going to, to really determine if it's the right fit. So Sarah, what about you? What factors went into you deciding for Appalachian versus a different school? Sure. So I'm from Lenore, which is just the really small town. And it was the running joke at my high school that we were going to graduate high bright and everybody just see each other again at Appalachian because it was just the school that normally everyone just kind of looked into. So when it came time for me to transfer, I started looking into Appalachian to be honest for that reason. I was like, hmm, everyone else is going there. Let me see what they have to offer. And then I went and toured the campus and I got a feel for the sense of community that they had up there that I really loved about the community college. So that really piqued my interest. And then another factor was I was actually able to go to Appalachian debt free from scholarships and grants. And the money aspect of college was like a really big thing for me. So that was another really important aspect of it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Miranda, looking back at the time that you were here, uh, what advice would you give to current CCC and TI students on that transition process? So the biggest advice that I can give current students is to begin thinking about what major you want to go into at your university. And once you kind of have an idea of that, go ahead and look at the career or the the degree requirements and see what classes you're going to need and if you have some electives that you still need to fill for your uh, degree at Caldwell go ahead and fill those electives with courses that are going to transfer and count towards your degree at the university so for me I knew that I was going to major in English and so I started looking at their degree requirements and I saw that I needed some more literature classes. So during my last year at Caldwell, I started taking extra literature classes that weren't necessarily required for my AA degree, but would satisfy the elective as well as transfer over for my degree. Yeah, you're one of those proactive ideal students that looks yeah. ahead and looks at what will cross crosswalk between us and your university. Excellent. Sarah, what about you? Looking back and what, what advice would you give? Sure. So I totally agree with everything Miranda just said. That is really great advice. Um, another piece of advice that I would give is just be patient with yourself during this process because it is a transition process. You are going on to something that's going to be different than what you're used to at the community college. So just be patient with yourself. Just know that it's going to be an adjustment period in your life, but it's going to be worth it. That adjustment process that you um, just mentioned, that kind of carries over into what we're seeing in the research too as um, it's, it's a little difficult in that first uh, semester or year at your uh, college or university. And um, my last question then, Miranda, would be, is there anything you have learned you wish you would have known before you transferred? It is never too early to make connections at your university, whichever one you decide to apply to, um, whichever one you're serious about attending, because the more connections that you can make before you're actually there, the better your experience is going to be once you are there. And what I mean by that is I am a, 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 a disabled student, so I knew that I was going to need to take advantage of disability services. So I started looking into what kind of programs each school that I was applying to had and making connections with those programs, with those um, disability counselors. So that way I knew what was going to be available to me at those universities once I got there. And Sarah, the same question then to you. What have you learned that you wish you would have known before you transferred? Sure, so mine kind of goes along the same thing that Miranda spoke about, just try to make those connections before you get there. 
And what I mean by it is, like Ms. Horn touched on, I was a transfer student mentor during my time at Appalachian. And so my first semester, I kind of struggled a little bit to get my feet under me. But then when I found the transfer mentors, when I found the transfer student organization, all these things that I got involved with, it made my experience so much better. So I just wish that I would have known to look at that maybe first thing to try to reach out to these people like first thing and really get involved right when I got there. Yeah, thank you both. Um, I that are that's all of the questions that I have, but I just wanted to extend the offer of if you have anything else that you would like to add, either Sarah or Miranda. I guess one piece of advice that I would like to give um, to the students would just be just to get involved in something you're passionate about when you transfer to whatever university you're thinking about. Because, yes, you, you're going to love your major, you're going to love the academics, but getting involved in something like a club, organization, anything like that, it's just going to make your experience that much more memorable. And it's also during like, your involvement in these clubs and organizations, you can learn skills that you can take with you after you graduate into the workforce. So that's my really big piece of advice. Well, coming coming I, from, oh, sorry. sorry, Miranda, go ahead. <laughs> I agree with Sarah. Um, for me, one of the things that I remember most about my time at Gardner Webb was the fact that I was able to do things at Gardner Webb that I hadn't had the opportunity to do before. So mm -hmm. I joined a French club because I really enjoy the French language. Um, so that became a huge part of my college experience. I joined an honor society for English majors. Um, that was fun. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, if you have an interest in something, even if it's as strange as a foreign language or whatever it may be, get involved with those people and just branch out and try new things. That's Excellent advice and something we strive to to uh, communicate to our students while they're here at Caldwell is to get engaged in any of the activities and clubs that we have here, even during pandemic times. You know, our um, I don't know how active our clubs are online, but we're still doing things virtually with students and we hope to, you know, be able to get out of this pandemic era and go back to meeting more, you know, doing more face-to-face -face activities. But um, that that means a lot that you uh, are, are just reiterate, reiterating what has been substantiated in the literature as to how, what it takes to be successful as a college student. So thank you all both so much for joining us and with your valued input and feedback today and your experiences that you've had while at uh, Gardner-Webb University and at Appalachian State. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers today for joining us for What's Next. And we hope that if you are here at Caldwell uh, next semester that you'll join us um, for our next series coming up um, in the fall. Thank you again, everyone.